Welcome Forex fans, it's Rob here and I'm going to be doing what Battle Mode did and I have listed all of the Forex games of the past decade, all of which I actually own, which is insane. These are all the ones that I've found and I've also compared them to the database list that we have. I believe it's 35, it might be more than that, but regardless, I have played each and every one of these. There's a couple that I haven't, so I didn't add them. And I also kind of feel that a few of the ones that Battle Mode added to his list, like Heroes of Might and Magic 3, and a couple others like Conquest of Elysium, don't really fit 4X. So with that, I wanted to do my own tier list in response to Battle Modes. And I'm going to be a little bit more... I'm going to basically just say that not all these games are good. He said that all of the games he had he liked or he, he saw value in. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you up front that I don't think there's value in all the games that I'm about to place. So this is going to be much more in line with our rating system at Explominate, where blue is basically like an exemplary. An S tier game is a game that I consider to be very good, a game that I enjoy very much, and also can be considered objectively good in a lot of ways. It may not be your cup of tea, but it's definitely mine. And then D, I think, are universally just like games. Or they're just so broken that they're really not worth anything. So I'm going to actually go in order here. And at the end, when you see this list, you can fast forward because I'm not going to take I'm not going to take two hours. I'm just not. I'm sorry. I know that Battle Mode did. And if that's your thing, I'm I'm glad. But I don't think it takes two hours to figure this out. So with that. Here is my tier list for the past decades worth of Forex games. So AI War 2 and AI War 1 are probably, there's probably the most mm, controversial one on this list, I believe. I'm not exactly sure AI War 2 falls onto the Forex spectrum i mean it's forex adjacent for sure but i don't think it's exactly forex it's definitely grand strategy it's the only one that i'm putting here because i still i still feel like it has forex qualities and with a an upcoming dlc with some of the like roguelike elements they're giving and actually they're going to be presenting a map that you have to explore i believe it's going to become much more forex but it's such a good game that I'm gonna I'm just gonna keep it on this list. So he put it on his list. I'm gonna keep it on this one. It's the only one that I think is probably not exactly 4X yet. But I do believe that it has the ability to become 4X with these this next DLC that's coming up. So Alright, let's begin. First of all, AI War 2. I'm gonna put S tier. I truly believe AI War 2 is one of the best games I've ever played. It solves the issue of AI being an issue, period, because the way things are so asymmetric, it really just makes the game feel a lot more fun. And there's literally like I, exponential ways to set up the game. And there's also canonical ways to play the game. So it just feels like a game that was, I don't know, made for someone like me. It was made with so much love and the fact that it's an indie game is ridiculous. It's it's very pretty. It has great gameplay. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And frankly, I think that it just isn't getting talked about enough. So I know there's a lot of people that have an, an entry to barrier with, er, sorry, a barrier to entry, <laughs> a barrier to entry with it because there is quite a bit of a, a steep learning curve. But for those of you who are doing that and haven't tried it because you think that it's too hard to learn, if I can learn it, you guys can. So check out my video series if you do. But yeah, the visuals, the gameplay, AI War 2 is one of the best games of our generation. And I don't care who wants to argue about that. It's the truth. Age of Wonders 3. Now, Age of Wonders 3, I think, is a game that's just barely inside the Forex parameters. I think it's a great game. I think that I didn't play it as much as I played other games, but I can see its merits, right? I think that the graphics were great first time. The gameplay, the tactical gameplay is is very good. That being said, I think the tactics take away too, too much from the strategy layer of the game. And it feels much more like a tactical game kind of surrounded by a strategy game. And because of that, I'm not really thinking 
that it could be any higher than a B for me. Now, again, I understand its merits. I think that it's a great game in a lot of ways. The strategy game is a bit, you know, it's a bit reduced. It's a bit simplified, which I'm okay with in a lot of reasons, in a lot of ways. I mean, I get kind of tired always playing the, like, what do I build next at which city? That kind of, that gets tiring. And Age of Wonders did, did away with that for the most part. I mean, it just didn't feel like there was a lot of micromanagement when it came to city management. And I, I can get down with that. It's just that its tactical battles felt a little too time consuming and the rush to tier four units became a little bit too ridiculous. But that's not to say it's a bad game. I think it's squarely in the the consider category, the B category, because if it, if tactical battles don't get in the way of you having fun, then it's a game you enjoy. So now, which is strange because I think <laughs> Age of Wonders Planetfall is actually an A tier game. And that's because I think that they did a better job of making the empire management level and layer a lot more fun. Although it still falls into some traps, I think. But also because I think the territorial system or the sector system really managed to add some strategic depth that I really enjoy. And the combat itself is, I think, better than Age of Wonders 3. And it feels like maybe it's just as long. It really is. But there are a lot of times where you can skip through it. And then what I really like about that system with Age of Wonders Planetfall is that you can begin a combat, maybe go through the automated combat, and then realize, oh, crap. Like, you go through, do the auto-resolve, the, the results weren't what you wanted, so you could actually replay it and do it yourself. It's a system I really appreciate, which means I can usually auto-resolve most and then occasionally play them when I need to, which feels like it takes a lot less time. So I think Planetfall, not only because of that, but also because I think the setting's better. I really enjoyed a couple of the races. In fact, the factions feel really asymmetric in that game. And, you know, the, the differences with the classes and the secret techs just really make the game feel really great. It stumbles a bit, in my opinion. I feel like the colony management has become a bit too micromanagey. And I think there's a midpoint between Age of Wonders 3 and Planetfall that would feel a lot more fun for me. So... That's why it's going to be an A. Armada 2526 is solidly a C game for me. I enjoyed some of what it's done. I think that it attempted to do some new things and cool things. And I know a lot of people will put it up way higher than this. And a lot of people will say, oh my God, it's a D game. I think it's a solid caution. I think that there's some things to be gleaned from it. I think that, you know, a few of the gameplay mechanics that were introduced are, are pretty fun, but I just didn't play it that long because honestly, it was, it just wasn't a game that really hooked me. And that's why it's in C because I may have had 10 hours with it. I remember thinking that, you know, there was some cool things about it, but nothing really stood out and nothing grabbed me. So it is in the C category for that reason, because I just don't know that much about it because it never really grabbed me, but I could see that it was better than some of the other games that are going to be on this list at the gates. It's also going to be a C and I, I would almost put it here. Because it's not finished, it's abandoned. And John Schaefer clearly has no intention of ever fixing it or finishing it. But there are some really cool mechanics that I really enjoyed about it. I really like the profession system. I really like the nested tooltips that John Schaefer came up with. And I think that a few now, I mean, Crusader Kings 3, I can almost guarantee you that when John Schaefer was at Paradox, that he helped Crusader Kings 3 with those nested tooltips guarantee it and now old world and i'm sure other games will adopt the nested tooltip system it's it's revolutionary really i mean it really helps a game that feels overwhelming when it comes to information feel a bit more understandable and a bit more comprehensible and you know m you know manageable and so that with the profession system and the fact that it's like this one it's basically like a one city challenge I think it was really cool. The fact that you can migrate the cities are really cool. If he had actually finished the damn game, it might be up at the egg category, honestly. If diplomacy was worth anything, if, if the AI was actually functioning, if it wasn't buggy, it would be up here. But because he didn't get that, and I don't think he ever does plan to, I think he's done. I think it's going to stay at C. And it really could be a D, because I hate that it's been abandoned. But on the merits of some of its innovations, I'm going to give it the C category. Beyond Earth, I'm going to put in the B category, and that's probably going to surprise some people, but Beyond Earth actually ended up becoming a really good game with Rising Tide, and I spent a lot of time with it. 
I think it's a really good game. I like the the I forgot what they call them exactly, but the, basically like the like personality system. I forgot what it's called, but like where you can move in three different directions in like your philosophy changes based on the direction you choose. And I like that it felt alien, you know? I mean, it might have it, it definitely felt like a skin, a reskin of Civilization 5 when it first came out, but when Rising Tide came out and they start adding like diplomatic currency and you know, a bunch of different ways to, you know, interact with your your fellow sponsors, it started to feel like a real 4X game and you know, it, it, it has shortcomings. I think that it was unfortunately compared to Alpha Centauri way too much. And that's not our fault as much as it was for Axis's fault, in my opinion. But it do do a lot of things. If, if, if it had if it had really leaned into its personalities a bit more and made the sponsors feel more distinct and asymmetric, I think they could have done something really, really freaking cool with it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it was a fun game. So it stays here at B. Civilization 5, I'm going to piss people off, but it's going to be a B as well for me because I have had a hard time getting into Civilization games since Civilization 4. I realized that Civilization 5 was pretty solid, but there were a lot of things that bothered me about it, most of which was the forward settling issue. I think that forward settling and the AI were just awful. There weren't many games. There aren't many games on in the Forex genre that... I feel like I, I could really just do whatever I want and not really try and always win, even on the higher difficulties. And Civilization V is one of them. That's not to say it's not a good game, because I realize that it is a good game. And for a lot of people, Civilization V will be way up here or here. And some people say Civilization V is their favorite in the series, where coming from Civilization IV, where the AI was just magnificent, and I really didn't mind the Doom stacks. And, you know, a lot of what made Civilization V was already present in Civilization IV. I just, I, I can't in good conscience put it any higher than, than here or here. I'm only putting it here because I only put like 80 hours into Civilization V. And there are other games that I put way more hours into and had a lot more fun with that I feel are deserving of spots higher than this. That's not to say that, you know... It didn't bring its own innovations. The one unit brutal, you know, love it or hate it. I think it was a better generate general direction for the game or the series. But like I said, the AI was never really all that great, and it just never really did anything for me. So yeah, that's that's how it is. So Civilization Six is going to be a C for me. I still can't get into this game for the love of God. I understand that probably at some level mechanically it's a decent game, and with the new stuff in the season pass that makes it a little bit more weird i like it more but i just i still can't play a full game through because it feels like everything takes forever in civilization 6 now from what i understand with the season pass even though it's more fun it's way 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 imbalanced there's a lot of ways to cheese the systems and make them basically just uh just not fun <laughs> for a lot of players so for me civ 6 is just not a game that i enjoy it's just not one that i have enjoyed and the civilization formula has really kind of run dry with me. And that's because mainly I'm an older guy. I'm almost 38 or I'm almost 39 now. And I've played every civilization since the first one. And the formula is kind of stale. So civilization six at this point having, you know, really, I mean, I know it's done a lot to innovate on the civilization formula with regards to districts and something like that and stuff like that but all that just feels like unnecessarily busy work and i i haven't really enjoyed it so yeah yeah as much as i want to because i really do want to i love 4x games and i want to love civilization 6 but i can't get into it all right colonization is gonna be a b and the only reason it's a b is because of the mods that came with it because initially when it first came out civilization 4 colonization was a huge disappointment for me because I played the 1991 version or 1994, I can't remember, version of colonization and it was magnificent. And when this first came out, I was like, I was really disappointed because there were a lot of things missing, a lot of depth, a lot of difficulty. And I don't remember exactly what the the patch or sorry, the mod changes. And I, I need to, I'll link the mod in the, in the description below because there's a few of them. And one of which was the one that really kind of turned it around for me and made it a game that I could enjoy. 
it's not a game that I could enjoy as much as Civilization, or sorry, as much as Colonization 1 from the 90s. The one in, in the 90s was something that I spent hundreds of hours with. It was fantastic. It was kind of like the Civilization version of AI War. You were always up against something. It was... It was, a, it was a combination of a civilization game and an AI war game where initially you were competing with your rival countries, but then eventually you had to go against your mother country. And your mother country was like the AI in AI War 2 because they were overwhelmingly powerful. But you could build yourself up to become just as powerful or more powerful and overcome them. And I will tell you the first time that I won a colonization game the, with the initial colonization I was beside myself. It was amazing. It was such a feat for me, such an accomplishment. And this didn't quite manage to capture that same excitement, though it did get better with the mods. So it's right there in the middle for me. Donovan Drummond is a D. <laughs> as, the, as if that wasn't expected. Unfortunately, that game could have been something. It could have been like a mix between Sins of a Solar Empire and Solaris. It didn't get anywhere close. And then the developer abandoned it. And there's no reason for me to give it anything any higher than that. Man, I really don't want to waste any more time with it. It's a D. Distant Worlds Universe is a solid S for me. It's one of my favorite games of all time. I've spent five, six, seven hundred hours with this game. And, you know, the mods made it even better with the UI mods, the bacon mod. And, you know, at the end of the day, when all of the content was introduced into Distant Worlds with the three different expansions that became Distant Worlds Universe, I can't tell you just how consumed I was by that game. It's a, it's a feat. And it's even more impressive because the, the graphics weren't great. The UI wasn't great. It was pretty obtuse, opaque, and it shouldn't have been as good as it was because it's only made by one person, but it's a great game. And the automation systems and the way that you could tailor the automation to become the game that you want it to be was out of this world. It's next level. So I will always love Distant Worlds Universe. And you know what? I will always love Endless Legend. I don't care who you are. I don't really care what you think. This is my game. Endless Legend was a game meant for me. I, I wish there were some things. I, there were some things I would change about it. Endless Legend is not a perfect game by any means. The combat system is exactly, it's, it's just a shy, like a, a hair shy from being good in my opinion in fact if they took the endless legend combat and actually replaced it with the humankind combat i believe endless legend would be one of my favorite games of all time period it still is one of my one of my favorite games of all time i still have more hours with it between the vip the amplitude vip version and the actual retail version than any other game in my steam list it's like about 400 something hours and you know it, it's something about the factions the factions just really bled so much store like cool like story and backstory and the the fact that there was like this quest system and this rpg system within this beautiful alien world endless legend is the whole reason that i started explominate i started explominate in, in september of 2014 which was like literally a week before the endless legend full release came out and it's because endless legend brought me back to forex gaming so I think it's one of the best games I've ever played. I'm personally just a huge fan of it. That's not to say it doesn't have its warts. And I hope the Endless Legend 2 goes in a direction that's more in line with what humankind has brought to the table with its, you know, its take on like the territory system that you can merge territories in humankind and that you can actually like have full on tactical combat in humankind. If those could be carried over in Endless Legend 2, I can't imagine a game that would do it for me better than that. Now, on the other end of this, <laughs> funny enough, Endless Legend or sorry, Endless Space One is the game that started to get me back into Forex, but it fell really short. Diplomacy ended up being really weak in that game, and diplomacy is a pretty big thing for me. And I also really like the the initial contact you make with somebody in a in a Forex game. And because it's it's fun. It's like exciting to meet new people, right? And Endless Space had just awful first contact stuff. It just was not fun. And a lot of, I think, Endless Space's systems were just like precursors to end up being a better game in Endless Space 2, which I'm going to go with A tier. 
And that's because I love faction asymmetry. I do think combat's a lot deeper than people understand it to be. And I really genuinely like the the quests and stuff like that, the Endless Space 2 brought forth and, and had in the game. And it, it added so much depth to the game that personally, I, I, I've i played Endless Space 2 so many hours and I still want to go back to it. You know, it's not perfect. I hate the build everything everywhere mechanic. I hate having to do that. And, you know, a lot of people will say that it's style over substance. I don't believe that whatsoever. I think that the game is really fun. And, you know, people think that it's node-based. It's actually only node-based for a little while. And you can quickly get out of having to go through nodes. It's like literally one of the, maybe the second tier of research. And speaking of that, that's probably one of the least favorite things I have about the game or feel about the game is that the, the tiers or the research tree itself was never really something that felt understandable. But Endless Space 2 is a game that's not only pretty, but I thought brought Amplitude Studios into like a different, like, like a different sphere of, like you know, or maybe even like. <laughs> funny enough, I think it brought it like to a different tier of game development. And you know, Endless Space Two is one of my favorite games, and I'm I have I don't feel bad about that at all. Galactic Civilizations Three, man, I want to put it here. I do. I just can't. It's just not. It's too much like Civilization Two, Galactic Civilizations Two, for me to considered an A tier game. I played a lot of it. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's a good game. I just don't like a lot of it. There's a lot of things I don't like. There's a lot of complaints I've had about it. You can go and read my re-examination that I did. It, I, I, I gave it an 8.9, but that's only because after four expansions, it was actually decent and I had fun with it, but it's just not a game that will leave an impression on me that I can consider 10 years from now being like, man, Galactic Civilization 3 was a great game. There's a lot of games I'd rather play, and I'm hoping Galactic Civilizations 4 changes that. Gladius, I'm going to give... You know, I'm going to give it a B as well. And because that's... For me, I enjoy battles, and I think that Gladius does a really good job of doing war and battles. But 4X games, it, it, it there's been a lot of talk about Gladius feeling like a turn-based real-time strategy game because a real-time strategy game revolves around building a base, building units, and going out and using those units to kill other people and or like to take on other armies. And then a lot of the buildings you're building in RTS games are upgrading your units or allowing you to build new units. And Gladius feels like a turn-based version of that. So I'm not 100% convinced that it's a, a true 4X game. It has 4X elements for sure, right? I mean, but... It's just not, I, I like diplomacy in my games. I like to have some interaction with my fellow players and that's not there, but everything that Gladius does, Gladius does very well. So I'm going to leave it right where it is. Horizon. That's a big D for me. I don't like Horizon. I think it's a simplified game that tried to do like the whole Master Ryan 1, 2 thing. It wasn't nearly as good as either of them. And I just don't see myself ever really playing it again. Maybe ever. So... There's not much to say. When I put a game in a D category, I'm not going to explain myself. It, it's just not a good game. I never liked it. I played 20 hours of it tops, and that was because I forced myself. There is a Horizon 2 coming. It seems like it might be a lot better, and I look forward to seeing what they can produce and maybe learn from their mistakes from Horizon, but Horizon is a game I never really liked. So, Humankind, what I've played of it, I'm going to put it in A because I think it's as good as Endless Space 2, if not better. And I have personally played it more as a VIP than I have played Civilization and Civilization 5 and 6 combined at this point. I think it's finally doing, it's finally innovating on the historical Forex genre. And I believe that it's going to be a huge hit for Amplitude. More so, I think that once they have released it and they've given it an expansion or two and have kind of shored up some of the things that feel a little barren right now, that it could be an S-tier game. And I mean that. I really do. I mean, it's the first game that I feel like Amplitude's finally hitting on all cylinders with. And it seems that a lot of people are on the same page as I am. A lot of people who've played the Victor Open Dev and, you know, have been around it have really felt very positive about. And, and quite frankly, I'd rather play Humankind over any of those Civilization games at this point. And I'm, that's just me. It's not a style over, style over substance game whatsoever. There's a lot of depth to it. 
there is a lot of great stuff there and you know the territory system is a huge thing the tactical bot battles are a huge thing i really like the choosing of cultures every every era i think there's just a lot to like about it so it's up there for me i don't know how it'll be for you guys when you guys finally get your hands on it imperium greek war imperium's greek wars i like it it's a great game it's way too basic looking for me it feels like a game coming out of like the early 90s and maybe even worse than that maybe even like early 2000s where people tried 3d and it just looked awful but the underlying gameplay mechanics are great the the economy system very good the battle system really good there's a lot to like about this game it just feels a bit dated in almost every regard outside of that the ui is dated the look is dated I put in about 30 hours for my review, and I haven't really gone back to it since. So, unfortunately, it's a game that I feel like there's a lot of depth and a lot of possibilities with regards to, you know, it's the next game in that series or the next game from Cube Games. But I understand that at a mechanical level, it's actually really good. And that was pretty evident based on our discussion with the developer, the main developer, because Pavel said that he has a board game history, right? He makes board games. That was his thing. So it feels like a board game, a really good board game. And it's it's really good as a result, but it's just not a game that I'll probably go back to unless there's a real good reason. And, you know, that is what it is. Interstellar Space Genesis. I'm going to place as an A. And that's because I think that it does the Master of Ryan 2 slash Master of Ryan formula better than almost any other game out there. And the things that I didn't like about it, which were some of the visuals, which were some of the, the I, I guess you could say like right now, the, the few issues that I have still with it are diplomacy feels really underbaked and that the maps don't feel as big or as expansive as they could. And I also kind of feel like the mid game drags on more so than just about any other game. So I'm, I'm hoping for some more mid game stuff, but like their exploration stuff, their remote exploration mechanic is great. They've done so much work to make the game look good. Their tactical combat is very good. And it's only made by a couple people. So, I, you know, I've got to give a few points for that as well. But I've come back to it quite a few times. I've enjoyed my time with it every time. And I really genuinely think that with another expansion, the Interstellar Space Genesis could be up here in the S tier. It's really good. You know, it, I could probably put it down here. But I feel like I'm giving it the edge because of the the developers behind it, the clear love they have for the series and for the genre. And because I just feel like it's a very solid game. You know, I I you know, I, I might actually drop it. There's there's there are a few things that I have. There's a few issues that I'm thinking about now that I'm I'm remembering. I will say diplomacy is one of the worst I've ever seen, and that really bothers me because it just feels extremely bare bones. You know, I, I really value diplomacy in a game. I feel like the need for personality and flavor to be present in a game like that needs to be high. And it feels like they don't understand that, or at least they haven't so far. So I think Interstellar Space Genesis on that alone is going gonna, is gonna to bump it down for me. It's one of the few things that doesn't really draw me back in, right? Like the core gameplay of it feels pretty fun, but... The diplomacy is pretty rock bottom, and I just that that mid game drag really feels strong in, in Interstellar Space Genesis, and I I want to like it more than I do. Let's put it that way. I think it could be there. I really do. I think it could be great, but it needs an expansion to make it great. So it's not there yet. Fallen Enchantress Legendary Heroes is one of my favorite four X games of all time. It's ugly. It's warty. But the player verse environment element and the diplomacy systems are both very great. The unit building is amazing. Those two things alone are just above par. I have spent many, many hours on this game. And I, you know what? It's not everyone's cup of tea. And quite frankly, it really is ugly. But I don't know how this game got in here. I just realized that this... Where did you come from, Master Ryan? I think I put it in there because... I wanted. I didn't know I was gonna have remnants in there, but sorry, I'm digressing here. But going back to Fallen Enchantress Legendary Heroes, I think the tactical combat was some of the best it's ever seen. Like you, you could go through, and 
and play a tactical combat scenario out really quickly, but you could still make a difference in how well you played that. And that's really, really hard to do to, to, to balance tactical combat with the need to get back to the strategy layer, but also feel like you're having an input and some sort of agency inside the tactical combat. And I think Fallen Enchantress was really damn close to perfecting that. And beyond that, I mean, I just think the RPG elements made it a great game. So we're going to lead this down here. Sorry. It, it was meant to have remnants of the precursors and that attached, <laughs> like, you know, half and half. So Master of Ryan conquered the stars. I'm going to give it a B. It wasn't good until the very end. Actually, you know, I'm going to go with C. It was a game that could have been way better. I think they spent way too much money on the voice acting. And I thought that they gave up on it too soon that the last final, the final update, the last free update did a lot of great things. It added some really cool spy stuff and a lot more personality to the leaders and stuff like that. And I love seeing my favorite races as animated, as well animated and as voiced as well voiced as they are. But I just felt like that the presentation was way more important to them. I think that the star lane stuff really took away from the game. It took away from the strategy layer and it was missing stuff. I don't know. It just didn't feel like the game that it could have been. And, you know, had they had they followed the Master of Ryan 2 or 1 formula a little bit closer, I think I would have enjoyed it more. But they did enough on both, to, to both formulas and then added their own that it just took away from what I believe makes a good 4X game. But that's not to say it wasn't fun because I did have fun with it. So it's there because I think that I just think that it could have been more and it and it it it's priorities were in the wrong place. So old world. You know, I don't know where to put this. Because it's not done yet. However, it does have some of the best mechanics I've seen or felt or heard or played in any Forex game I've played. But I'm gonna leave it at A for now, because I'm not sure that a game that's not out yet can reach S tier. But I do believe it has the, the potential to do that. And that's because the character development, the random events, the nested tooltips, the combat, the AI, these are all fantastic in this game. And I think the only thing that really kind of holds it back is the setting restrictions. I think that if they'd gone a little bit past the classical era, I would enjoy it more. But... It is still very, very good. And it was it's very good for those reasons I've listed. It could easily become one of the best games I've ever played. I've put a lot of time into it, and I still enjoy it. And recently, as I've started my Let's Play, I feel even more challenged by it. You know, there's some issues, I think. You know, the fact that it's stuck in that, that era isn't my favorite, although it could it could work out. I think that if they moved into the next era a little bit too, that would be great to see. You know, I also don't really like the performance issues. I know that they still have some time to fix that, but with someone who has a pretty decent computer, performance is awful in that game, and especially as you start to have people moving around. But the the other stuff, the character development, the AI, I mean, just every other system about this game is like next level stuff. And I really think that a lot of people are going to be looking back on Old World as kind of like the one of the, like the few games that really kind of pushed the forex game and and forex genre and the next into the next like you know evolutionary step. So it's A, but it could become S. Oriental Empires for me is a D. I never enjoyed it, never once. I know a lot of people did. I could never get into it. I think that the battles are boring. That city development's boring. That everybody, everything, like literally everything about it is just so vanilla that i could never really enjoy it so sorry pandora i'm gonna give pandora a c only because of the ai that ale the guy who is pretty well known around the forex community for having developed very good ais as he got into the the end of the base game and then into the expansion ale really elevated its ai to the point where it actually became a very difficult game it tried to be I mean, it's, it tried to be very hard. Alpha Centauri, it never came anywhere close. 
but it's a solid game and I'm only giving it a C because of the AI. Otherwise I would put it here. Pax Nova, also a C. It could be a B or A, it depends. I mean, right now it just feels like it's, I, I hate using this, it's full potential. It's got some good systems, it's clean. It looks good. It's it sounds okay. It's actually it's one of its main you know gripes. One of my main gripes with it is that the sound effects for battle sound awful. The balance isn't really there. I don't like that it doesn't have very asymmetric races. I feel like the game just feels a bit too simple, and the tech tree is over really quickly. But those are things that could be fixed. Like those are things that with more content could be fixed. I and mean, that's part of my issue with it is it doesn't have much content. And, you know, I, I don't really like the, the lead developer. I mean, I, I, I feel like he is, he's not always very honest and that bothers me. So I won't get into that, but I think that this could be a game that I could later put on into the B or a category but it only it's it's really contingent on the fact that they add a lot more content and they make the game feel a bit more unique every time I play it. Planar Conquest is a D all day. Try to be Master Magic. It actually is where is it now? Worlds of Magic. It was like it was the developers here trying to take the same game and make it a light, slightly better or better, but it only became slightly better and it still sucked. And I would wholeheartedly recommend never touching these games unless you just don't like to like yourself <laughs> you just hate yourself so neither one of these games are worth your time at all Polaris sector i'm gonna put it in the b category i think that i did another a few things too that were really cool their research system where you're putting kind of allotments into categories of science and then you know basically receiving output from doing that you didn't really you weren't researching specific technologies you were putting you were allocating your efforts into various technology like groups and thoughts and you were presented with research topics after that as a result it was a pretty cool system and you know I, I don't think it was a bad game in any other way actually I just wouldn't go back to it so I feel like it's got to be C. I think it tried a lot of cool things, and I really liked the developer. He was a good dude. But I just never became a game that I really liked that much, and I didn't play it that much. So this, the tech tree was stuff was cool. The technology system was cool. But beyond that, I just I, I don't know anybody who's really talked about Polaris Sector since it really came out. So, And for me, I haven't played it since it came out. Battle Polytopia, I think, is a B. It's right there in the middle. It's It's a... It's a decent game for what it is, and you know I think that its simplicity works for it because it can be played in 30 minutes, but it's not a game that I enjoy so much that I come back to it very often. I only come to it when I feel like I want to play a quick game against someone, like some of my friends. And I'm just not a big multiplayer guy, so you know it's it's simplicity works for it. It's just that it's too simple for my taste, and yeah. Uh, just you know it's very middling you know fair to middling so i'm gonna leave it right there in the middle because it's not bad it's not good predestination can show off it tried to do what pax nova is doing in fact it did what pax nova is doing before pax nova did it only it's uglier in hell it has very little direction it really just feels rushed and <laughs> It's I, I there's nothing good to say about predestination, so I'm not even gonna worry about it. So these two, which I'm just gonna put together, are absolutely S tier games for me. Remus of the Precursors, Master Ryan, Remus of the Precursors being the way to play it if you're gonna play Ma Master Ryan, are I mean they are some they are my first Master Ryan was my first entry or exposure to F Space Forex games, and it it still retains the excitement. It's still I think that I wish that Dominus Galaxia had had its chance because I feel like it was doing some things to evolve the formula a little bit. But I'm I'm really I really enjoy the focus on diplomacy, which is a huge thing with Remnants or Master Ryan One. And 
ship combat. And like diplomacy is a huge aspect of it. Spying, espionage is a huge aspect of it. And then ship combat and ship development. Those are just like really big portions of the game. And those are some of the things that I enjoy most about 4X games. So, and of course, you know, the exploration too of finding new new planets that were habitable and stuff like that. Those are exciting, exciting elements for me. And uh, Remnants of the Precursors or Master of Rhine 1 is probably up there mainly because of my... I, there's just not a game that does that formula better. And I love that formula since I first played it way, way back when. So... All right, let's wrap this up. So Rebellion, I'm going to give it a B because I know that it's good to a lot of people. I enjoyed it for about 80 hours. I don't think it's all that great as much as people say it is. I think ship combat was fantastic, but beyond that, it never really grabbed me. And, you know, it again, it didn't really have much diplomacy, though, you know, it had some better systems as the game progressed or as the, the expansions kept coming. I think with some development into like the diplomacy systems and stuff like that and a little bit more in the way of like exploration and sins of the solar empire could be a game that i'd love to death but it's just not there yet sorcerer king rivals i'm gonna play c it could have been a b or even an a for me if they kept playing or they kept developing it but they didn't they kind of just said all right that's cool i mean sorcerer king rivals is the standalone expansion to sorcerer king and the, my main issue is that it was built on an engine that just didn't feel like it had the ability to run that game. And it just feels like it's clunky. And today's standard, it's just, you know, it's just not the game it could have been. It, it, it was kind of almost like a fantasy AI War 2 or AI War at the time. And it had the ability to, it had the capability of being a, a, maybe an S tier game as a result, but. I don't think they understood exactly what made AI War 2 as good as it was, or AI War in the case. And, you know, they, they fell short in a lot of ways. And, you know, I don't want to get too much into it. I thought it was a great game. I thought the combat was great. I enjoyed Sorcerer King for about 100 and something hours. But I wouldn't go back to it now. So, Sword of the Stars 2, you could just place right there. I don't care what people say. I know there's a mod that like, helps some of it. It's just not a good game. <sighs> That's all I have to say. Star Ruler 2 is going to be a solid B. I think it could be A tier if it had a better UI. And there are a couple, there's a UI mod that really helps it out. But, you know, the, the modding scene, the modding community around it, because now that it's open source, could put it in a place where it's A or S tier. But... I think, unfortunately, while the diplomacy system is like super unique, it's not always fun and it feels a bit too obtuse and a bit too impersonal for me to really enjoy for too long. So it's a good game. I really like that Gal Civ 4 is going to be taking cues from it, but I don't think that it's a game that could really hold my attention for too much longer than it did. So Star Drive is going to go up here and that's only, and I repeat, that is only because of the combined arms and black box mod. If you, you took it for its game itself, it's down here. It is a C game. It is a C game. In fact, if we're just going to leave it here, in fact, I will do this. It is a C game with the black box and combined arms mod. It's here. Okay. It's up here because the, the black box and combined arms mods are fantastic they fix almost everything that was wrong with the bugs and stuff with the Star Drive game. They fix the pacing. They've done so much. And then with the combined numbers mod adding so much more content, it's 100% up here. It's a great game. More people should play it, but they shouldn't pay Dan DeChico a single cent. So that's how I feel. Star Drive 2 the same way. I'm going to put it down here. Could it have been an A tier game? Absolutely. It could have been. And I thought that he actually was going to fix it, but he's already disappeared again. Not a surprise. And it they're going to forever remain here unless... I mean, this is an A-tier game right now, regardless, because of the black box and combined arms mod. But I don't want anybody looking at this and thinking for a second that the base game of Star Drive is anywhere close to the top. It's just not. And I would not... I'm not... I'm not advocating pirating. I'm just saying if you can buy it for $1.49, that's about as much as I'd pay for it. 
And then I'd give the rest, the $20 that you'd save, and I'd give it all to the black box guys, the black box and combined armor mods guys, because they're the ones that deserve that money. So Stars and Shadow, it's a B game. It's probably, it's, it's, it could be a, a, an A game as well. You know, it's very much a combination of Master of Ryan 2 and 1. I like that the colony management focuses you to, fo focuses, sorry, forces you to really consider what you're going to build at each city because, or each planet because you are limited in what you can build. I think that's a great system. The tactical combat's very good. I love the art style. I just don't think there's enough de enough depth. And I feel like every game kind of feels the same, even though the races are pretty asymmetric. All the games kind of like eventually devolve into this, like, you know, either everybody's allied with each other or everybody's at war. And that doesn't feel fun. And honestly, the diplomacy system in that game feels easy to cheese. So I just feel like even though Stars and Shadow has a lot going for it with regards to its tactical combat and its planet management and, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I really like its art style. I just think the diplomacy system is too easy to cheese and games don't feel that much different from one another. And that's that really has a lot to do with the lack of personality that these these factions have a lack of you know, it, it just never feels like it always feels like it devolves into to one of two things. And that's just not fun, in my opinion. Solaris is also a B game for me. I understand it's great for a lot of people. It's not that great for me. I have played a lot of it. I've played about 118 hours of it. I've played a lot of the last expansion and DLC or I'm sorry, and patch. And I think that it's better than it was, but it's still sloggy as hell and everything takes forever. And I'm not someone who can really role play. I need more. And I just feel like it's hampered by systems that are never going to be fixed. That Solaris 2 might. But, you know, when Solaris first came out, I was hoping for a more character driven 4X game with, you know, grand strategy elements. And it's just never happened. And I think until they get to that point, I think Solaris just feels like it takes too long for it to be fun. And then it's fun for a minute. And then it gets to back to being sloggy again. And then the end game is a, is a slog again. And I'm just not really, I'm not interested in that. It could be an A tier game for, for me. It, it could have been an A tier game for me at, at different points in my life. But nowadays I just don't like games that last like 40 hours. It just, and that's the, you know, that's like on the smallest map. So Wizard of Warfare, I've barely played, although I've seen some great stuff. I'm going to leave it here just because I haven't really played it enough to say anything else. It could be a B, A, S, or a D. I don't know. I have only played it for a little bit. It looked like it had some pretty decent systems. It's a one-man developer. I'll do more, I promise you. I'll research it more. These are, I'm just, I'm placing both these here because I've only played each for about five hours. And I don't understand either of them enough to really give them. In fact, I'll just leave them off. I'll leave them off. It's not, it's not fair. It's not fair for me to judge a game that I've never really played. So with that, Warlock 2, I'm going to place it a B. I think with a Renaissance mod, it's an A. Actually, I think I'm going to go back. I'm going to do the same thing with this one as I did Star Drive. I think it's a C game with, and then you place the Renaissance mod in there and it becomes B or A. It really depends on what you're in for, but the Renaissance mod is life-changing for Warlock 2. And it, it feels really fun, but unfortunately I think, you know, it's, it's one of these, it's, if I could have like a B minus or C plus, it would be there because I feel like it's in between these two, but it's also like massively improved with its Renaissance mod. So if we put it, if we put it here, it definitely has a B with Renaissance. If we put it here, it's probably an A with the Renaissance mod. It's a Renaissance mod is one of the best mods of all time. So. I think if you're interested in a game that's very much like Civilization but fantasy, you should get it and then get the Renaissance mod because that's life-changing for that game. So last but not least, Xenia's Ark. You guys probably haven't heard of it. That's because it's ugly as hell. It tries to do what Pax Nova and Predestination did before it. No one's talked about it because it just isn't pretty. It doesn't offer anything new. And I don't I don't think it's still in development. So even though it was supposed to come out of early access at some point last year or this year. So yeah, that's it for me. 
right? So I've only got what f six or five A tier or S tier games, and one of them I'm not even sure is a Forex game, but the other ones I feel very confident in saying are my S tier. You know, Distant Worlds Universe again, one of my favorite games of all time. Endless Legend is one of my favorite, is probably my favorite game of all time. Fallen Enchantress is way up there as well, and Remnants of the Precursors is probably the one game in Master of Ryan One and you know Slash is my is what probably really started my forex obsession so back in the day way back in the day and then you know these games here especially human and old worlds could be s tier depending on where they go i mean they're they're not released yet so i can't really like i would not feel right giving them s tier but a tier for sure i mean i don't know of a better game you know in that in this state that they are in I mean, these two games not even being out yet are better than, what, 80, 90% of the Forex games that have come out in the past few years, past decade. So, yeah, they could be something special. And then Endless Space 2 is something special to me. I have a lot of fun. I mean, I, I was the creator, the concept creator of the Unfallen, and I won the contest with Amplitude with my, my, my Unfallen, you know, creation or, care, or concept. And so I feel, you know, a, a kinship with that game. But yeah, and Planetfall is is just shy of being S tier. So yeah, now that's my my I guess my response to battle mode, you know. I think he put some games on there that I wouldn't necessarily call 4X. And he also maybe put some games on there that I can't I still can't believe where he put Endless Space 2 and Endless Legend. I, you know, but it's, it's weird because he, that doesn't really surprise me. So anyway, I'm really eager to hear what you guys think. That's my feelings on the matter. I can't believe this took me 51 minutes. I did not expect that. And now I know why Ben took as long as he did, because he spoke on them much more than I did. And I think he likes stock more than I do. <laughs> so I'm just kidding with you, Ben. Anyway, that's mine. I'm a, like I said, Oh my God, how did I miss Shadow Empire? Shadow Empire, holy crap. No, we're coming back up. So A is, Shadow Empire is an A for me. And I'll tell you this, I know it could be, it's S tier for a lot of people. It's S tier for Ben. It's S tier for probably Daz Tactic and a lot of other people. It's A for me because I feel like the game is too damn opaque. I feel like there is an entry to barrier for Shadow Empire that is beyond reproach in some ways. And I do believe it's too ugly for a 2020 game. You know, I just feel like there's some things that could be done to make it look better. There are some great modders out there that are already doing some great work, like the Pimus with his stratagem art pack. I wish, I hope that he goes on to like some of the VidCom screens and stuff like that. But like the terrain and all that stuff just looks hideous. And I think, you know, there's still mods that are fixing that. And I think they look much better. But beyond that, the actual underlying systems are pretty damn good once you start to figure it out. It just took me like 15 hours of play to feel like I have even a grasp of it. And then I start watching Ben and some of the stuff he's doing and seeing Trifler, who's somebody who clearly knows his Forex, comment on our videos. And the, the knowledge that's required to be good at that game is immense, more so than probably any other game on this list. And that's why I couldn't put it in S tier for myself. I could see it becoming S tier with better graphics, better usability, if it had nested tooltips, and if it had some like key binding stuff, which I just feel is like a huge oversight. But it's still a damn good game. <laughs> I like it a lot. I can see where people are obsessed with it. And, you know, it's mixed a really like low key, but also much more dedicated and complicated empire management layer with a fantastic war game pretty much and you know i i think that a lot of people once they get past that barrier really like it and i'm one of them but that it takes 15 hours to get through to that is something that most games on this list if not all of them would could, would be able to say that it didn't take you know, Distant Worlds Universe probably being the, the second, but Distant Worlds Universe, you could learn from a couple of Daz Tactics videos. But Shadow Empire has taken me approximately 30 of 
their videos for me to even understand the basics. And I still feel like there are things that I don't understand at all. And I feel like I'm trying. So that's where it stays in the A territory instead of S. But I think it could make S. In fact, I know Shadow Empire 2 with some usability, better UI, nested tooltips, and better looks could easily become. I love the Empire management level. I love that it's a bit simplified, but that it's also very strategic and very, it's much more depth, deep than you'd imagine. But I also like that there's not like 400 buildings I have to build, you know? However, I just think that the things that are holding it back for me are not things that are going to go away. <laughs> so I can't imagine it going any higher than A tier unless some, I don't know, some major improvements were made to the presentation of the game. So that's probably going to be a little controversial too. I know that some people are going to be like, oh my God, it needs to be S tier. Well, it would be S tier if it was presented better. But when you get used, and if it wasn't so damn hard to get to. So that's it, guys. Now, now I really understand how Ben took so long because it's, I wanted to be quick and it took me an hour. So I'm interested to see what you guys think. I know that there's going to be people who disagree with me on the Endless Games. 100%. I've had a lot more experience with some games than Ben has. Of course, I have had a lot of experience with Humankind Old World, which he hasn't really had much experience with. I think Old World is one of the most promising games I've played in some time, along with Humankind. And, you know, they could easily jump up. I think Interstellar Space Genesis could be an A and S tier game, you know, depending on where they go with their expansions. And, you know, the rest of them feel like they're going to stay where they are because there's nothing really else that can be done. Pax Nova could jump up to B if it's been given, if it gives, it's a, if it's given the right amount of support. So we'll see about that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'm sorry if you've made it this far, you know, in, in kind of like as a conclusion, this is how I feel. It doesn't mean anything about Explominate. It does not represent Explominate. It's just where I am personally. And I'm happy to hear your thoughts and input, you know, and I'm happy to defend any of these choices if I have to, you know, any further than I already have. So this was Rob from Explominate. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, keep exploring.